Hey everyone, how's it going? I made a video last week telling you how it worked. A process with the sponsor. If suddenly something happened to the company that was the sponsor or to the person who was the sponsor, I mentioned in that video that I would tell you what happens to a process when the applicant has some kind of problem or decides to withdraw. I will also talk about that case here for you and what are the consequences of that, right? So let's touch on this subject. I'm hitting the road now. I'm heading to downtown. So we have plenty of time here to talk. Let's go. Before anything else, it's important for us to go back to that uh, video where I explained it to you. If I'm not mistaken, it was in the EB21 where I uh, draw the EB2 on the board and I explain to people the difference between the applicant, accompanying family members and dependents. Let's go. The applicant is the primary holder of the right, meaning the process will be filed and entirely based on them. So let's imagine in an E2 visa scenario, the applicant needs to have a passport from a country. That is part of the Treaty of Navigation and Commerce with the United States, while the others do not in an EB2. The applicant needs to have the qualifications for the EB, which are described in the ENA, the accompanying family members, or member actually, and um, the dependents are, do not. So what does that mean? The entire process will revolve around the case the applicant. And this is where we start to understand the consequences of this. And I ask you to pay close attention because you will see some differences later. So what does that mean? While the process is ongoing, if something happens to the applicant, and I don't specifically mean that the applicant might pass away, it's not just that the applicant might withdraw from the process and then what will happen, the accompanying cult family members and dependents also lose out the applicant may pass away or the applicant may get divorced I've seen this happen if the applicant gets divorced the beneficiaries who are accompanying family members and dependents immediately lose their rights in the case of dependents it is not immediate as it is for the spouse in the case of dependents the applicant may choose to keep them or not and who will be dependent this decision this word I was trying to find here does not belong exclusively to the applicant it belongs to the custody ruling why because if the custody ruling determines that custody will go to the other spouse it might mean keeping those children or those dependents and I say dependence because dependency is not only applied in the case of children. There are other types of dependents that I have also explained here on the channel. These dependents rely on a custody or guardianship decision, right? Or being a guardian. So it depends on a few other points, but basically that's it. If the applicant loses, the primary status of the process withdraws, passes away, or loses anything within the process. This applies to the others as well. However, uh, we are talking about a general rule uh, and not a specific rule, therefore. Uh, in visa processes, which are those, obviously I have also explained to you here on the channel, visas are temporary. Permanent residence is not a visa. When you talk about permanent residence, after your main process is approved and you have either the adjustment of status or the consular interview where you receive the visa package, from the moment you file your 485, which is the adjustment of status, and you get your green card, at that moment the processes separate. So what does that mean? From that moment on, each person becomes their own applicant even if they are a minor 
So when you have a 485, which is the adjustment of status, for example, I'm just giving an example, but this applies to all other cases of adjustment of status or green card. When you have the approval of your EB2, for example, which is your 140, you will do the adjustment of status. You will do an NVC consular. When you have the approval of your status adjustment or your green card, and you have your green card in hand, even if something happens to the primary holder of that process, the others, whether they are accompanying family members or dependents, do not lose the right to permanent residence. What doesn't happen in the case of a visa, like for example, the E2 visa, right? I hope this has clarified things for you. Many people asked about this. It's a very common question and people often want to know, well, if I have an L1, do I lose it? Yes, you lose it because it's a visa. If I have an E2, do I lose it? Yes, I lose it because it's a visa. And an H, I also lose it because it's a visa and permanent residency, it depends. Permanent residency process, green card process. Until the main process is approved, everyone stays together. After the adjustment of status, each person gains their own procedural independence. Right, in other words, one does not directly affect the other right best regards to everyone god bless thank you